I want to tell you a story of a relationship. It's a relationship that has literally endured through feast and famine. It's a story of our relationship with plants that has changed plants hugely, but has changed us quite profoundly. I want us to rethink our relationship with plants because we've been modifying plants for millennia and they have been modifying us. Let me explain. In Neolithic times, we were all in Africa, chewing meat with huge jaws. And sometimes hunting meat was dangerous and hard, and we did a lot of starving until we discovered wild cereals that were happily just sitting around waiting to be eaten. They were tough and not very tasty until we discovered the technology to turn them into flour and porridge. And then you don't need huge jaws to eat porridge, so we gradually evolve more delicate jaws of today. Around 12,000 years ago, we migrated in waves out of Africa. And at the same time, we evolved to, to have paler skin so that we could extract or ma manufacture vitamin D from sunlight. Around the same time, we mutated to have uh, lactose tolerance so that we could get yet more vitamin D from milk. So, because we just weren't getting enough vitamin D from our diet of cereals. So, cereals are responsible for the shape of my face, the color of my skin, and my ability to drink a latte. Now, Neolithic farmers, quite sensibly around the world, were selecting the big three cereals of rice, wh rice wheat, and maize for bigger seeds, easier harvesting, and threshing. Modern molecular genetics has shown that these big three cereals, their genomes, are really weird. And when I say weird, I mean really weird. Neolithic farmers created modern bread wheat, and that is, that's called a hexaploid, and it's equivalent to a hybrid between three species. Can you imagine a hybrid between a human, a, a chimp, and a gorilla all in one? That's a hexaploid. So it's hardly surprising, then, that Mary Shelley's mythical monster, Frankenstein, stalks our very debate about how we move our relationship with plants forward. I want us to rethink this relationship, because in the last 10 years, we have achieved quite astonishing understanding and control of plant and animal genomes over life itself. And also, as you heard in the last talk, it's actually become astoundingly accessible. You can download the components for biosynthesis off the internet. And I discovered in September that my son's school friends do genetic modification in their lunch breaks. So we really need to embrace this technology and use it to tackle the world's major challenges of, fee of cleaning up the environment and feeding the world's growing population. Because it's something we've been doing for millennia but it's really important that we do it intelligently and collaboratively and, above all, ethically. And remember, Frankenstein was not bad. He was just misunderstood. Thank you. <laughs>